All right. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to start by acknowledging that today we are on the traditional territory of the Stolo people. I'm Henry Braun. I'm the mayor of the city of Abbotsford. And earlier today, I declared a state of local emergency for the city of Abbotsford following extreme rainfall that has resulted in several localized emergency within our city. Our first priority, of course, is to ensure the safety of Abbotsford residents. So evacuation alerts have been issued for a number of areas and uh, evacuation orders are in place for Sumas Prairie and Straighten area. And Chief Lee will uh, expand on that a little more. The latest updates can be found on the city's uh, website and are shared on social media channels. All city resources are currently engaged in mitigating these emergencies, including the Abbotsford Police, the Fire Department, Fire Rescue, I should say, Engineering and Public Works. I have Abbotsford uh, Chief, uh, Fire Chief Darren Lee and the Abbotsford uh, Department Chief Mike Sear here to provide you with an update and address your questions following which I'll close off this meeting. Thank you. Chief Lee. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, I have a, a little bit of a rundown I was hoping to be able to provide you, and then I'd be happy to take any questions at the end. Um, so, so far, um, evacuation orders are impacting approx approximately 629 uh, residences in the Sumas Prairie area. Um, that's from the border up to the freeway and pretty much west of the railway tracks out to, um, out to um, there's a, a sort of a large dike in, in East Sumas that's containing the water. Um, up in Straighton, there's seven homes that are on evacuation order as well, with another 15 on alert. Um, alerts that were issued as early as uh, yesterday at, uh, at 2 p.m. was uh, Claiborne Village, which is impacting about 30 homes down there. Um, up on Eagle Mountain, which is impacting another 12 residences. Uh, the Dawson Road area, which was largely to do with creek flows and some localized small landslides, um, there's approximately 50 homes there. The uh, Ten Oaks area, there's approximately 30 homes on evacuation alert and another 10 homes down in Matsui Village. So um, our ESS team's been working really hard. They're set up at, uh, at Abbotsford Recreation Center. They've been um, receiving um, D displaced residences from the city of Abbotsford and from around the Fraser Valley. So the, I should give that address, it's at 2499 on McMillan Road and that's the Abbotsford Recreation Center. And the EOC folks should be there till about 10 o'clock tonight or maybe they might extend to midnight depending on how busy they are. Right now they kind of report that evacuees are coming in in waves and that kind of lines up with as we uh, roll evacuations through the Sumas Prairie area as we evacuate a street, they're seeing some of those people show up. Um, we're looking, so far we, uh, ESS volunteers have serviced uh, approximately 61 families that come through to get registered and to get placed in, in hotels. And the way the process works with our volunteers is if a family is displaced, they can um, report to the, um, to the reception center. The volunteers take their particular information, look at any special needs and things like that around pets or um, young or old family members and they, they try and make sure that they place them in the right type of hotel and they'll set them up for as much as 72 hours to have them just get that immediate support and just stabilize um, their lives for them because it's, it's a pretty traumatic event to be displaced from your home. Um, and uh, the one thing we are looking at with um, the amount of people we're seeing for evacuations, we'll be looking at group lodging options. We're just in the early stages of planning that. I don't have anything concrete to report to you at this time. Is there any questions on, on what I've put before here? Can you just do a favor and say it's by your name again one more time? Yeah, I'm sorry. So first name is Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, and last name is Lee, L-E-E. -E. Okay, and that's what the... Uh, I'm the, I, fortunate enough to be the uh, fire chief with that for fire and rescue. Perfect, thanks so my much. Privilege. Yeah. I would know it, but I just want yeah. to well, so, thank that, you. so that they yeah. know too. Thank you. Yeah, yes. and just maybe, uh, uh, just one thought here is, I know the rains let up this afternoon, but there's still a lot of rushing water in those creeks, so this event is by no means over. And then for those people whose houses have been impacted by mudslides or by um, overland flooding, is the recovery phase will take weeks or months. So, you know, we really feel for those people, we wanna make sure they're supported and that the city of Abbotsford can do everything we can to get them access to the right type of support from the province and, and other agencies. Is this the first time you've seen it on this scale in Abbotsford? Um, I gotta defer to a couple of really, really talented people up in the EOC. So 
they're looking at um, different flood, historical flood trends, um, and they're they're looking at anywhere. Um, they're it's you know it's a long term storm. Um, it's such a big city and a diverse city, so we have different types of challenges. So one is you know in the hillier areas, you might see um, like a creek running off, and that creates a landslide. Whereas down in the Sumas Prairie or Matsqui, it's pooling water on on flatter land that's causing flooding in homes. So there's kind of like the two challenges. The other one has obviously been um, just the disruption to travel on the roadways. I'll let uh, Chief Sear comment on that maybe a little bit more. But this morning's commute was really challenging for us. So a lot of folks trying to get to work, trying to get um, just get around, and, and there's just so many road closures that it was com causing compounding issues. And is there any? Uh, are you able to speak to like the not stress on the crews, but uh, how are you doing resources wise? Are you able to bring in resources from other communities if needed? And how does that work okay, for the emergency? That's a great question. So for the ESS folks, uh, we reached out to the City of Mission and some other ESS groups around to help us staff that reception center. For Abbotsford Fire and Rescue, we've called in um, extra career staff and extra and our paid on call firefighters to help um, boost our complement. Because even though we're dealing with a lot of localized flooding and landslide issues, um, and these rolling evacuations, we've been able to you know, work with our search and rescue, Central Fraser Valley for search and rescue. Um, but we, we had to bring on extra staff because we still have to maintain the service level in the city as well as deal with all these, uh, some large scale and then a lot of small scale emergencies around town. How many people are housed at ARC right now? Um, ARC is just a reception center. A reception center. So I don't have an actual number on the number of people that have been that have been set up in hotels and whatnot, but it looks like we're right around, and the number's climbing, but it looks like we're around 61 families so far since the rain event started yesterday. Checked in. Yeah, checked in. Yeah, checked in. Yeah, checked in. A lot of people, um, it's, uh, it's actually a good point you bring up. A lot of people, um, you know, instead of going to, uh, to access ESS um, support, they'll just go to uh, friends and family in the area, and it's just, it's, it's, if it's better for them and less traumatic, and then that we, we, we usually see about sort of, in there's some research, but usually around 20, 25% of folks who are evacuated end up reporting to some sort of reception center. You know, quite a few people, they just, they have those social networks and they, they can they can lean on friends and family in a time of need. And is there gonna be need for another reception area or is ARC can handle it so far? As far as a reception area, ARC is keeping up right now with the demand. It's, it's if more folks start to turn up for, um, for looking for that, the support for up to 72 hours or beyond is what we'll have to start looking at group lodging options and whatnot just because hotel rooms have become really hard to come by. Quick question just uh, quickly about uh, you're sort of dealing with the uh, families and things like that. Is there any other um, issues you have to deal with like livestock in the prairie, that sort of thing, and how, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I, 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 uh, unfortunately I didn't get any numbers on livestock that's being moved or anything like that for you, but it's, it's, um, it's definitely a concern. I think uh, you know, a lot of the farmers have worked the land here for a, a number of generations, and they're they're pretty resilient. Um, but I don't have any numbers on livestock that have actually had to be moved. Yeah, fair enough. Over to the chief. Sure. Thanks, Chief Lee. Maybe I'll just reiterate real quickly that uh, you know a lot of people are looking outside and they're seeing that the rain has stopped and they're thinking that this is over. I just want to once again say it's not over. Uh, there's going to be at least another 24 hours plus where we're going to be managing, uh, you know, the flooded roads and, and traffic. Uh, so if you do not have to travel uh, tomorrow, you do not have to commute or go into work, you can work from home, please do that. Uh, we are uh, very, very busy. We have multiple road closures. Please follow us on social media. We'll keep you advised. But uh, it is taxing our resources. We are, uh, are doing our best. Uh, you know, I was out there earlier today watching people going around those barricades, getting uh, themselves trapped in, in flooded waters. And that is, again, just pulling our resources away uh, from other parts of the community that are uh, where we're needed. So again, if you don't have to travel, please don't. Follow the barricades, follow you know, what we're, direction you're being given. Um, you know, the other thing too is our unsheltered community uh, has been really impacted. Uh, a lot of work's been going to finding them uh, you know, a safe place to uh, stay for the next couple days. Uh, so that's also been put in place. Uh, but like I said, please over the next uh, you know, 48 hours continue to monitor on social media. It's changing uh, very quickly and we expect to see the floodwaters uh, rise before they do go down uh, in the next little bit. So I'll turn it over to Mayor Braun unless there's any questions.
Thank you, Chief. And uh, I just want to say that Abbotsford is the largest, geographically, it's the largest city in the province. I think it's just under 400 square kilometers. So we have a lot of ground to cover uh, from east to west, north to south. But I wish, I wish you could come upstairs to the Ops Center. We have a great team up there that is really providing a great service to our community. Uh, you would be proud of what I have seen yesterday and today. Uh, so, and, and under the leadership of our uh, fire chief and uh, police chief, uh, they're doing a, a great job. Uh, so this will be our last media uh, availability for today, but we will continue to provide updates on the city's website and through our social media channels and whatever information uh, we are able to share, we will do that uh, throughout uh, the evening and, and uh, so forth. And we'll see what the morning brings and we'll go from there, so thank you. Unless you have any questions of any of us. I don't think so, Mayor. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you.